Good evening. We are uh, a small, compact group, a good group. I welcome you to this uh, community meeting on um, issues of health in your community. Uh, my name is Steve Blanchard. I'm the chair of the Bear County Health Collaborative, which is sponsoring this. And uh, the collaborative are the major hospital systems in the city, uh, the YMCA, uh, a, a part of the medical school, the county, quite a, quite a, and a university, quite a composite of organizations. And, um, I'm sorry? Is there a mic? I have no mic. Oh, is it not on? I think this is just going to Clayton. Yeah. Well, I can... It's the first time I teach at a university. It's the first time ever, anybody's ever accused me of not speaking loud enough. <laughs> so we'll raise the voice, eh? Can you hear me now? Anyway, uh, I, I welcome you to this evening's uh, community meeting to listen to your voice on issues of health in your, in your community and perhaps any strategies you might have for improving community health. I am the, my name is Steve Blanchard, and I'm the chair of the Bear County Health Collaborative, which is comprised of the major uh, uh, health uh, hospital systems in the city or in the county, uh, the YMCA, uh, medical school, uh, the county, and a number of, a number of other organizations. And uh, we do this every periodically, about every three years. Uh, do an assessment, uh, work with the community to understand from your standpoint what the issues are that you confront every day in terms of your own health and improving your health. And um, we have with us tonight that will help us to facilitate the discussion, a group that we've been out of Boston, we've been working with now for, well, we began with them in, in 2010. This is actually, I think, the fourth or fifth assessment we've done. We started in the first one in 1998. But anyway, Health Resources in Action, and I'll introduce you to my Tokayo. It's got the same name as I do. Steve Rodini here in a minute, he'll get that portion of the conversation started. But I want to say something about what's going what's to become of, of our having listened to your voice. I can give you a, a pretty concrete illustration. Uh, Steve and I met with uh, Mayor Castro uh, a couple of days ago and um, his, and with one of his uh, assistants, and they're very open and listening to the conversations that we have as they are listening to the, uh, to the community all the time anyway. But they're particularly interested in terms of SA 2020 and um, issues of community health. So the kinds of things that we talk about end up in a report, but it doesn't go on a shelf. It ends up in a report, becomes an action document for improving community health, and becomes a part of the decision making that happens at the municipal government and at the county government and in our own Metro Health Department, which is also part of the part of the board. You might remember, or maybe you don't, but a year or two ago there was a half a billion dollar bond issue that went out and some of it had to do, a good piece of it had to do, improvement of parks, getting better lighting on the street corners and all of that, because a lot of what we already have learned over the years, and perhaps you'll talk about tonight, is that we know we need to exercise, voila, here we are in the YMCA, we know that we need to exercise, and um, but Neighborhoods need parks and lighted streets. The mayor and others in the municipal government listened to those voices, not just the ones here, listened to those voices, generated that bond to improve parks and lights. So even though what we talk about tonight, you won't see change tomorrow, you will see change uh, over the next year or two on issues that you present in a conversation this evening. So again, we're informal and um, and very eager to listen to what you have to say. Um, and um, Steve Rodini, please, come on down. And that's what they say on the TV? Yeah, come on down. Yeah, the, this is The Price is Right. This is, uh, this is Steve Rodini. He's the Vice President of uh, Health Resources in Action. He's a, it's a group out of Boston. Several of his uh, colleagues are in the back that will be helping in small groups. Uh, we go back a number of years now, and uh, Steve uh, is good at what he does, and I welcome him here this evening and introduce Mrs. Steve Rodini, and here's the community, here's the and, and here's the group. Thank, <laughs> thank you very, you very much. much. Okay, yeah. Thank you. 
All right, so before we get started, I'd like to go, can you hear me? I'd like to hear your name and why are you here? And there's no wrong answers. I'm thinking you have a lot of other options tonight. Maybe you came for the free food. Maybe you came for the enlightening conversation, but I'm curious to hear why you're here. So if anyone wants to start. You know what, it might be good and face that way only because, um, at least for this moment, so people can hear who you are, okay? My name is Nadia, and I am here because I needed some volunteer hours. Okay. And this was um, one of the, the... This was one of the options. This was one of the options. Okay, a, an honest woman, thank you. <laughs> we'll take it. With your permission, I'm Colega. So I would like to uh, I'm Luke, sure. and I'm the exact same boat as her. Yeah. Same okay. Class. Yeah, we're in the same class. You're in the same class. What's the class? It's for... Um, Management and evaluations. It's not with Dr. Blanchard, is it? No. Okay, just checking. All right, great. Glad you're here. Uh, my name is Suzanne Garcia, and I'm here for uh, volunteer hours. Okay, good. My name is Amanda Leal, and I'm also here for volunteer hours. Okay, we got a theme going. <laughs> my name is Jessica Guerrero, and I'm here for the same reason. Volunteer, okay. Uh, I was here, we're actually both here for a class. Out of where? Uh, UTSA. Okay, great. Okay, what's the class? Um, it's epidemiology. Okay. Okay, wonderful, great. Okay, you're not here. You're not here because of a class, though. No. Okay, I didn't I think have so. No <laughs> okay. And an interesting citizen. Good. Good. Okay. Then I saw beautiful San Antonio there, and they were smiling. And they were, what's happening? What's what's going on? And I'm here. I stumbled here. So thank you. So I so I did the training at a dense half hour and uh, free food. Can't beat that. No. And uh, who's from Boston? I want to extend. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been an interesting week last week, so thank you. Thank you. But that's important. It is good to be here. I might have to leave because of professional Okay. Not at all. Thank you. Well, hello. My name is Mizan Oates, and I live in this community. I'm also a board member of the Health Collaborative, and I'm delighted to be here uh, to listen to this presentation this evening about a very important subject, and that's our health, and what's going on with that in our community. Great. Um, I Thank have you, to, Pilar. I'm sorry, but, well, I'm not, a, I'm glad we're doing this, but it's, this doesn't have an amplifier, so okay. what it's catching is people's voices that will be oh, on. Okay. We're, we're live streaming there and recording this, so your voices will be. So you're on TV. Oh, yeah. So I think we should just pass this Make around. Make sure to get this, your good side. Have you spoken yet? Oh. Has everyone already spoken? No, no. Beth. We're right here. Please. Well, hi, I'm Beth Davenport, and I'm also a member of the Health Collaborative Board. Yep. In addition, I am the manager for community health screening programs, so I have Great. a lot of interest in this discussion Great. tonight. Well, really good well, to have you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> hi, I'm Mercedes, and I'm here for service hours. <laughs> you're here what? For service hours. Yeah. Okay, so okay. That's a theme tonight. <laughs> That's good. You're here for your service hours. Hi, I'm Avery, and I'm here for volunteer hours Okay. Well. All righty. Um, Let me Aaron, guess. And I'm here for service hours. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. 
Well, let me... Do I? I don't need to use this, do I? Well, it's only recording over there. It's not broadcasting anything. Okay. So, no, you don't need that because okay. it's already picking you up. Okay. I'll just put it right here. So, what I wanted to do is, as Pilar and some others identified, we really wanted to ask you some questions about um, health and how you think about health. So there are no right or wrong answers here. And really what we want to do is we, as we develop the information for this assessment for the county, we want to get your opinion. So even though you're here for volunteer hours and you may be observing, we'd also like you to participate. We'll do that in small group and we'll do it in large group. So I guess the frame I would like to use as we think about what impacts your health is to think about some, um, a frame that researchers use out there in terms of thinking about four major things that impact your health. One is to think about your lifestyle and the choices you make in terms of your lifestyle, but also the things around your environment that also impact your lifestyle. So if there's a grocery store in your neighborhood, that might impact your health. If there's not a grocery store in your neighborhood, that might impact health. If you go to the grocery store like me and you start in the sweets or chip section, that could impact your health. So the idea there is that there are things in, the, um, uh, in, the, uh, in, your, in lifestyles or lifestyle choices that can impact your health. Before I go on to the next one, I just wanted to ask you, what other types of things related to lifestyle can you provide as examples? Yes. Hold that thought. We're going to come because that's going to be a specific area. But as we think about lifestyle in terms of how you live your day-to-day -day life, what are things that can impact your health? I be <coughs> I'm not dressed to be on television. <laughs> I, be I believe that consistency yep. is very important. So if we're, we're gun-ho to start an exercise program, a yeah. diet program, this and that. We have to be consistent and then we have to be gentle with ourselves. We can't yep. expect change instantly. Yep. It's not hatch, match, and dispatch. It takes time, but it consistency. Even if we exercise for uh, instead of two hours at the gym, yep. if we just park our car somewhere, you know, further down and okay. we walk and instead of, you know, and we, and we, and we think throughout the day, how, uh, what am I intending? I'm sorry, I'm getting nervous here. It's okay. What am I intending to, to get out of life? Yep. Well, the body is a wonderful mechanism. Mm -hmm. It needs to move. Mm -hmm. You either use it or you lose it. Right. So I think that consistency is very important. Once we set our goals, you have to have a game plan. Yep. Whether it's budget, whether it's uh, schoolwork, whether it's uh, yep. uh, uh, health or the council, this is but for yourself, you have to do it for yourself. Yep. Because we only have one life. Yep. And that's ours. Right. Well, so what I'd like to do is even here. take a step back from what you were saying, is that some people may choose to be active. Some people may not. They may their their choice may be to go home and kind of sit on a couch and watch TV all night. So that's another choice that you're making. Other people, there are communities we work in where people talk about the fact that they would rather have their children stay at home because it may not be safe outside. So unfortunately, those are choices that some people have to make because of the environment in which they live. Is there another example in terms of kind of thinking about from, uh, what influences your health based on lifestyle choices? Yes. Community access to medical care. Please say that. In this particular community, access to good medical care. So did everyone hear the notion of access to good medical care? How does that impact your health? Exactly. Exactly. So if you don't know you have high blood pressure, you could be doing things that are contributing to unhealthy lifestyle. In other situations, if you have access to screening, you might be able to figure out sooner rather than later what you need to be doing. And in other places, you might get education even before you get the onset of high blood pressure to prevent that from coming in. So you're absolutely right. Yes? I think an, I think an important step to take in any community of this size is to make medical facilities accessible in all neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. The east side does not have the transportation, the south yep. side wherever, does not have the transportation or the means mm -hmm. to take the bus or take the taxi and go to the medical center. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You have to bring the clinic in the neighborhood. So this is another piece, though, around lifestyle. So people who may be living in the east side may not have transportation options to get to the facility. So it's another piece around lifestyle. So that's one area. Are people getting this idea of how lifestyle, your choices, and your environment influence your health? Yes, no, maybe? Shake your head one way or the other. Tell me you're breathing. Okay, good. So the next area, did you have a question? choices in what you eat also. What you eat. Give me an example. Well, how common, I mean, you can just walk to Burger King and if you're busy work, you don't want to go home and cook for the kids. Yes. Fast so food. did everyone hear this? It's uh, some of it is about what you choose to eat in terms of lifestyle choices. Um, interestingly enough, I worked in a, a public school in a, in a city where when we were talking to young kids, about the use of forks and knives, the teacher said, don't worry, they don't use forks and knives. They don't know, those kids haven't been introduced to that because everything they eat, they eat with their fingers. So what's that telling you about that particular community? That some of those kids, all they're eating is fast food. So whether it's a chicken McNugget or it's a burger or fried chicken, so the fact that they're not using utensils gives you a quick sense of what it is they may be eating. And it may, probably in most cases, may not be healthy. So yes, food is also an issue. So does that make sense as one area? So the next area that also influences health is the environment. What is it about the environment from your thinking has an impact on your health? What I'm gonna do is just ask if we can get some others, okay? I'll come to you. What, other things in, what are the things in the environment that would impact your health or affect your health? Think about your own day-to-day -day life. I'm looking at you, but I won't call on you. <laughs> like, how, what do you do at home? Well, what does that mean? Like, um, the habits that, you know, your parents, that you grew up with your parents, like, the kind of thing you do, culture, you know, a lot of that has a lot of Okay, so great. So that environment in terms of your home environment. So it may be what people are choosing to do in that home environment. Going back to what's being served at the table in terms of whether it's fast food or something else. What else about environment? So that's great family. What else about the environment? Anybody? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Like people who smoke or if you're around friends that say like it a little louder. Go, like people who smoke or people so who, like people to who drink. smoke. What does that mean if you're around a bunch of people who smoke? What's that? You may not see anything wrong with it, but what if you say it a little louder? Secondhand smoke. There was a time where people didn't think secondhand smoke was an issue. Now we have come to realize that secondhand smoke is an issue. Do you now know there's another thing that people are talking about? They're calling it thirdhand smoke. There's an issue around thirdhand smoke. It's actually worse than actually smoking. That's what they're saying. So smoking, that's another thing in terms of the environment. Anything else related to the environment from folks we haven't heard from? Yes, well, go ahead. Safety? Yeah. Say it a little louder. Right. How many of you have heard that or think about that? If your environment is not safe, you may not want to be going outside to go jogging or running. We did a, an assess, uh, a conversation, what was it, about two years ago, and a woman said she didn't feel safe walking around in that neighborhood. Anything else? Well, I'll come back. Okay, so that's another area. So as you think about this, we've got lifestyle, we've also got environment. The next area um, that we can think about is genetics. So do you want to give us an example since you... Yeah. So that's another area that influences health. It's your genetics. You could be from... A uh, a group of people that suffers particular types of um, diseases. It could be a racial thing, it could be an ethnic thing. Uh, you could also be from a family that has a higher blood pressure. I live in a family where on my mom's side, everyone um, of her siblings and parents passed before they were 60 due to high blood pressure. So that means something about what we have to think about in terms of our consumption of salt and being uh, paying attention to hypertension. Any other genetic things? Anyone else? You all have been very quiet. You know I'm going to pick on you before the night's over. 
So think now. <laughs> Any other things around genetics? Well, let me ask you, does that make sense? So as we think about what influences health, we've got lifestyle choices, again, personal choices, but also the, um, what's going on in your surroundings. We've got the environment, we've got genetics. The fourth area is healthcare or medical care or medical. So that's a fourth area that in, can impact your health. And as Beth brought up, that you may have better health status if you have access to these services, whether they are intervention services or prevention services. So those are the four areas that we can impact, um, that influence or impact your health status. What I want you to do is turn around and talk to folks in your group, and I'd like you to identify what you see are some of the key factors or key issues in one or many, in any of those areas. So what I'd like you to do is think about those four areas, and I'd like you to turn around with other folks at your table and talk about or identify a few key issues that you would like to talk about, okay? Yeah, so you four could do a circle. If you two want, you can join this group. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. They're going to um, just talk about key issues, but I don't need you right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna facilitate this. I'm gonna call you in in a minute. What I'd like you to do is talk, but in the end, come up with one or two issues uh, that you want to talk about in terms of key, kind of key priorities or health issues in any one of those areas. Would you like um, And come up with a list of one or two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. 
So if you all wouldn't mind, just to be clear, if you think about what it is you talk about and kind of list out two or three areas that you think are priority areas to, uh, as it relates to the broader community, that would be helpful. We're going to then come back and share, and then we're going to break you up into groups to talk further. Okay? Let's see what you got for all these folks who are here because of volunteer hours. It's not a bad way to spend volunteer hours, right? Okay. We'll make it painless. Yeah, so since we talked about lifestyle, what is it? What's the priority? Like, if you had to spend some time and energy on that, what do you want to address? Like, what particular area of lifestyle? So put that down. So put it down as, you know, physical ap physical activity and then some of the reasons behind it. And that could be a priority area that you want to address. Okay. And then what was the fourth one? We have lifestyle. So that may be one area. Then also decide, is there something else in the lifestyle area or is there something in the e one any of the three other areas we talked about? Again, the reason why we're doing this yeah, is we want you to list it. So we'll hear what people say, and, and, and then you're going to sum it. Okay, so these are our main ones. Yeah. They get little squiggly stars. Squiggly stars. <laughs> Perfect. So what, what within those have we discussed? Because I think we're going to try to report that. Yeah. Well, then the environment, we discussed the whole safety issue about being able to go work out outside or run or jogging, or if you don't feel safe, you're not going to go outside. In your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or even if there was a gym around the area, like if you didn't feel safe, like driving or even walking. And then we discussed also how if there's a lot of fast food around the environment, then a lot of you're gonna go choose that over anything else because that's all it's offered. Yeah, if you're on your way home and there's a drive-through, mm -hmm. it's, it's easier. easier. It's easier. Yeah. And more so with lifestyle, we talked about your nutrition choices and your food choices. And your, whether you want to go work out or not, or make that time. Um, like work out as a family or individually. I, I mean, I think it could be. I think we all. I mean, I more people. Either or. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we mainly focus on with lifestyle your nutrition choices or your food choices. Least willpower. It's your most yeah. modifiable <laughs> behavior. <laughs> most modifiable, most modifiable <laughs> behavior. That's a good way to look at All right, Dr. Sosa. <laughs> I know, right? That stuck with me from her class. So can, I, can I give you just from a, a, a process? I mean, she always use those words all the time. Uh, and then I'd say, factors. think about is there another issue? Community because we'll get into the details. Foundations of health class. No, the foundations of health theory. I never thought school health would be useful, but I use it every day. So, yeah, I've been learning that, especially Maybe community health years. and personal health. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, those were with social Related things. to health. I took personal well, health could be with what's your family. Could be your no, I took the other one, the one that taught um, the short adolescents life. and health. But if you She's not there anymore. Oh, goodness, no. I had Dr. Shapiro for adolescents. No, I had her here, too, last semester. There was another woman who That class was a so if this yeah, is one I took it off topic. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I took it last semester with you, I think. Yeah. Okay, so I have three points for lifestyle and only two for environment. So to address the changes, like how would we make it the environment better? Would that just be like... I think we would have to like implement policies or either that... Through city council? Yeah. Or advocate for... So you all, you can think about another one or two of these, you know, and come up with some bigger ideas and then we'll talk about them more in depth. Yeah, interesting. Yep. So what do you have? Oh, so, oh, neighborhoods. Would you circle that as one yeah, of your areas? Yeah. This is coming up in three years. 
like cops or the neighborhood on patrol. Any of the above. So you all are saying that um, you know lifestyle, those are the those things are the you have the highest control over. Yeah. Um, which which do you think have has the most impact? Strategies that address lifestyle or the environment. Lifestyle, I think by right. far. Yeah. That's what, I mean. That's what we've learned in our classes that we've taken. Mm -hmm. By far, is that the main one is. I that's what I've learned so far as lifestyle. Out of the classes I've taken for health, that's what I've learned the most modifiable and the most that you have the most control over. And as an individual, yeah, and that's the one that mostly influences you and your family and. Your choices, I guess. Mm -hmm. That whole saying, you are what you eat, I think. And how about, so you, I think, were you mentioning policies or you know, advocating for different policies? Do you see that as impacting more than just, you know, you as an individual? I think it just would impact your whole area, your whole community as a whole. I mean, if people start seeing more people. I know whenever I pass by areas, I, I see people running or working out or it, it motivates you to want to do the same thing too. Or like I should be there. Yeah, yeah. it's like, I, I want to do that. I want to go for a run later. This is nice weather to go for a run or it looks like a nice place to go running. I mean, I know with me it motivates me or I want to go check out a new trail or something. Or, but if I, if I see it's a nice area and it's you know safe, then I'll go. Or if I see a lot of people in that area, it'll make me want to go. concepts in either of these two, lifestyle or environment. Right. So when you go in the neighborhood and here and there you talk to these people, these people are not as, uh, uh, as fortunate as you and I, professionals right. and educated at the best uh, yeah. places here. Yeah. But their needs are the same. So yep. equitable distribution of wealth. Yep. Yep. Take this YMCA, which is in the, this affluent neighborhood, and place it on the east side. Absolutely. And go to these places. Yep. And if the kids are interested in soccer, have the soccer instead of the basketball. So then. can you, let's talk that's that. Well, let's <laughs> identify that as an issue for here okay. in terms of this notion of the equitable distribution of resources. That was my, I was thinking I of love John it. Rawls. Uh, totally, the, exactly. Uh, uh, wait, it's a, you would enjoy in talking your, to him. neighborhood, you know, John Rawls, yes. Harvard University. Absolutely. But not Nozick, not entitlement. We are not no. entitled. Right. This is, now they actually have healthier food choices so I feel like that helps a lot mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like that helps a lot too but then another I think issue with I that I hear that a lot of people say like I want to be healthier especially college students but it's so expensive mm -hmm. and I think that's another issue is that you know I know in Brazil the healthier foods a lot cheaper versus here where it's a lot more expensive depending on what you choose but I think that's also a big issue too is affordability on eating healthy because mm -hmm. I know like organic food all that college stuff. budget, yeah, and on a college budget, it's not, it's not the best thing. But yeah. I mean, do you think college students are actually like focused on what they're eating? Uh uh. I think the whole freshman fifteen or when you move out, you know, mom's not cooking anymore, so you have to learn how to cook on your own. I think they don't know how to plan yeah, their day. Exactly. I yeah. think you learn as you go through college, and you realize. After you know, maybe gaining some weight, it's like oh, this is not for me. Like I need to change my behavior or something. And some others just don't care. But I mean, I think that's another issue too: is education on health. You know, people not knowing how badly you know eating something so often could lead to something. So I know the poorer communities don't know that. So I know that that's another issue too. A lot of issues. <laughs> It's easy to get negative, but yeah. there's ways to address it. Yeah. There's ways to address it. Like some, I mean, to bring it back to you're talking about the individual issue of you know making a healthy choice for meals, but that's that's a policy decision of the restaurant that's serving that now. So those are some environmental ways of addressing and impacting a lot of people um, to make your choice as an individual healthier. That's so true, that's and it's been getting better. It's been getting better. That's another issue. Totally like Dr. Clark. Or, uh, Mr. Clark. <laughs> Is that Dr. Clark? It looks like it, doesn't it? Where? It looks like it. It looks like if it's not him. I, like, I don't know. He's too know? tall. <laughs> no, it's not Clark. His eyes are too spinky. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Scope.
Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's weird to see a professor outside class. Oh, I have not really seen is. anyone yet. Mm-hmm. But when I do see Clark, he's like, "Hi, Maritza." I'm like, "Hi." <laughs> Didn't know you knew my name. Yeah. He's like, "How are you?" I'm like, oh, "Thanks." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good. You know my name. All right. That's cool. So, what are some other sort of barriers to you as students um, to being healthy? Good, Besides you affordability, you like you um, I would say time so management, yeah, because you're just so busy with school and you just want to go think about and, in the broad sense you know, you don't want to work out right. or you're just so then, tired, uh, it's like, do I really want right. to go for a run yeah, or do I really want to study instead or should I take the time to cook? Yeah. Should I just go get You got a few? Right. Okay. And you think those are the same issues maybe that families face that are, yeah, time management is a huge issue here with kids. Because some parents just want to go home to work and just lay back, lay back and not do anything. And they're like, oh, on the way, let me pick up some food for the kids. I don't have to cook. All right, folks, let's come back just for a minute. What I'd like you to do is one person in each group is just tell us the highlight in terms of what are the two or three priorities around health that you've identified. What I'd like the rest of you to do is listen because there's a lot of overlap in terms of what you identified. And what we'll then do is break off into maybe four, potentially five groups, probably four groups to talk about some of these in detail. All right? So which group would like to volunteer and go first? Increased training. We could actually do five groups. Okay, we've got five groups, so we may have five areas. Who wants to start? Please. If you, would you mind standing up so everyone could hear? What are the major health priorities areas? One priority I, I noticed a lot because I came from a neighborhood where it was like really poor and a lot of people live in poverty and from corporate. And we don't really have the type of program at the yep. was awareness. Not that we were aware of all the services we help provide. I would never know. I've only lived here for a year and I've never known about the poverty. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine these people and their children have mm. some kind of medical attention. They're going to have to drive out there. And some of them only have cars. I see people walking all the time from their jobs, yep. taking buses. And then they end up going to an emergency room because they don't have access to the nutrition. Because it costs probably more than half of the cost of going to go see a regular yep. pediatrician and yep. go see a hospital. And a hospital can range from $1,000, $3,000 per yep. yep. So I really feel that. So that's one priority area, awareness yeah, of resources. Okay, good. Okay. Well, another one? Um, another one, I guess, she, my friend mentioned safety. Safety. Because around there, there's no way I would go walking around there. Like, yeah. Okay. There's so many. Because you don't feel safe. You don't feel safe at all. Okay. The, the roads are completely messed up there, too. And okay. And then, Was there another one? If not, that's okay. We have a few other groups. That's about it. Okay, great. So, we've got two things that have come up. Safety, and believe it or not, that's actually almost come up in every group that I've seen. And then the awareness of resources. So, what other groups came up with safety? Raise your hand. So, we don't, you don't have to repeat that when we come to your group. That will be one area we talk about is safety. Another is awareness of resources. Let's pick another group, and are there other things that came up that you haven't heard? Yes. What came up in your group? Uh, well, we, we came up with a lot of things to talk about, but I think one of the biggest ones was, was yep. health literacy. Um, okay. Because I think it's really important that a lot of people aren't aware of, um, first of all, like diseases and all that stuff. They don't really know what it means. They don't know how it's to be treated. And then the other aspect is the whole um, insurance issue. They don't really know a lot about like different policies. Um, they don't really know hmm. like where to contact, um, how to get insurance, where their insurance can be used, um, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, We also talked about 
um, the access to healthy food, and that kind of goes along with transportation. Okay. So maybe around this area in this community, um, like there's Whole Foods down the street. There's um, like whole sections at like HEBs that are just devoted to organic living and healthy yep. lifestyles. Yep. Um, lots of different places like that. That in um, other communities they would have to you know take the bus. Um, yep pay several different fares just to get over to that and then haul all their groceries back because um, mm -hmm. they don't have access to those healthy foods. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, um, we talked about the importance of self-esteem oh, a okay. lot. Okay. So some people, they might just be like, oh, I'm, I'm overweight, I'm feeling bad about themselves. Um, yep. They don't really know like how they can better their lives. And mm -hmm. then we also brought up the fact that when you go to the doctor or the hospital, um, somebody said like the people that are taking care of you, often you notice they might not have the best healthy habits either. Yep. So it's kind of like, how do you take that advice and yep. interpret it into something you can use if the people giving it to you aren't really reflecting it very well. Okay. Could you do me a favor because I'm never going to remember all those good Sorry. things. Sorry. No, that's okay. Would you circle the few that came up so the self-esteem is one? That way I can come back when we bring it, go to the group. Like a different color? I don't know. E either way. And you also said health literacy. That was three. Self-esteem. Self and then you had access to healthy foods. And that kind of goes with the transportation. Please circle that. That's great. And did I miss one? That was it. Those were so far. Okay. So we've got a few. Now again, for those folks who've, begun, who've also talked about any of those, you don't have to bring that up now. What I'd like to hear, are there any other priorities that you've talked about? Oh, and um, who talked say? Oh, you did safety. You did safety and awareness. Of and awareness. Okay. What did you have over here? Okay, so for this group, what we focused on um, was lifestyle. And by food choices, we mean the actual person making the decision, I'm going to make healthy food options. Okay. Like, that is the easiest thing to modify, but at the same time, what they were saying, it's the easiest thing to ignore also. Okay. So, especially on college campuses, what we were focusing on, yep. um, getting those students to realize their food choices are going to impact them in the long run. Once they realize it, I've gained the freshman 15, then they start <laughs> addressing their food choices. So before it becomes an issue, they need to okay. address that. And All then right. our other one that we picked were the student barriers in, a, in an environment. Um, obviously their budget to get healthy foods and then um, time management to actually put in the effort to cook meals. So yours was really around healthy food? Uh-huh. Is that, yeah? Was there anything else you wanted to add? So is, can we think of that as a big, broad priority area? Anything else? What was your main focus? The only other unique thing is um, physical activity opportunities. Okay. So why don't we, we'll think about healthy eating, active living, physical activity. Okay, great. So those are two other areas. How about you all? I think they just did everything you did. So here we have access to resources, we got safety, we got physical activity and lifestyle. Anything else you want to add? I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Okay. All right. So would you do me a favor? Well, I'll look at these. That way I'll remember. Um, who didn't go? Oh, you didn't go. What were the big areas? insurances aren't taken always at specific doctors causing people to go to other doctors and then the whole referral system for people becomes very confusing medication management um, just medical record management altogether becomes an issue and um, the students brought up a good point you know some of them that are coming into San Antonio with insurances that are outside um, don't have access to medical care even though they have medical insurance um, so there's a huge increase in cost for their medicine, yep. um, increase in cost of out-of-pocket ex medical expenses if you're working, uh, families are working with in-network versus out-of-network physicians. And then with the whole Affordable Care Act coming into place, 
um, giving everyone free health care, but at the same time having a shortage in the medical workforce to be able to provide the service to families. So yep. that was an issue on ours, and okay. it was sort of touched in a different, a couple of different ones, yep. but this was specifically target, targeting about okay. the healthcare system. Everything else was relevant. To okay. What we had. Great. So we got everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's figure out how to do this. So, who's interested in talking about issues around safety a little bit more? Raise your hand. Who's interested in dinner? Just checking. Any, no one's interested in talking about safety, even though that came up in many of the groups. We can do safety. You want to do safety? So over here at this table, we'll have folks who are interested in talking about safety. Okay. How about access to resources? We got two. Anyone else? Okay. How about we keep the access to resource folks here? Um, how about physical activity options? How about healthy eating, active living together as one group? Heal issues together as one Healthy group. eating, active living? I know I was thinking that, but there are a lot of folks here. I'm, I'm curious to know what the, everyone else wants to do. How about healthy eating? Okay, so back there. Anyone who wants to talk about healthy eating, back here. Okay. Um, physical activity? Maybe, I wonder if we have enough. Should we, you wanna, should we break it up? <laughs> Why don't we do the physical activity folks here? So healthy eating, physical activity, safety, and what was this one? Thank you. Awareness and access to resources. Now the rest of you who haven't signed up for things, what are you doing? Safety. Is there another area that you wanted to do that we didn't identify? There was transportation, there was self-esteem. Anyone want to do that? You do? Well, okay, self-esteem, self-image is over here. You could be a group of one. That's okay. There's power in one. There's power of one. Exactly, right? Thanks for coming. So, remind me. Okay, and you'll facilitate? Okay, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. This is active living? You're in good hands. Okay. Safety. Oh, I should get them a pad, huh? Can I grab a, a piece of um, paper or two for this group? Excuse me. Oh, this is... You do? Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, got it. You know why we're just recording some of this, okay? I'll get you a marker. You're a good husband. Exactly. I had a lot of fun last night. That was a good place. have become sort of a running, 5K runs have become yeah. sort of like a social thing. It's the cool thing it to do. It is the cool thing to do, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like those cost money. Exactly. So the people that are going to be in it are going to be like, you exactly. know, people like who can certain, afford to pay yeah. the entry fee, whatever it might be. Exactly. Is it usually 15, 20, 25 bucks? Sometimes, um, sometimes like more. 35, 50. Really? Absolutely. 35, I mean, I know 80. that, and I always think, well, I'm do I really want to go right pay to run 5K and get a t-shirt yeah. or do I just yeah, run it in my like neighborhood like t -shirt t -shirt. And like one of, Some of them are like, can you get a beer afterwards? Yeah. You know? But I mean, it is fun from a social perspective. It's neat that it's encouraging people to get out there and do something. Yeah. What are other positive things that you see going on in terms of physical activity in the community? 
example, like what they did with Ciclovia a couple mm -hmm. weekends ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? That like, is, and that's free, right? Yeah. And yep. it's like, I mean, it just seems like you go out there and you realize, you know, how easy it is to just get involved, mm -hmm. you know, with things like that. Like, it's yeah. not that hard. Just pick a date and a time and mm -hmm. everybody will go. Yeah. <clears throat> how many of you heard of or were able to go to Ciclovia? So it was this outdoor, they closed down part of Broadway and you can ride your bike, you can walk, you can run, you can rollerblade and there's lots of booths that have yoga and CrossFit and mm -hmm. all sorts Zumba. of different Zumba. Yeah. So Ciclovia, it's kind of a, and the, the Y actually sponsors it. It used to be something that the city got into funding from the, from uh, a grant to do and then they were able to transition over the Y so the Y, y was able to keep keep it going otherwise it might have just happened once or twice and been done. So um, Ciclovia is another example of something positive. Um, any other things you guys can think of? Well like the people that I you know in my social group like we all have kids mm -hmm. and we put all of our kids in sports mm -hmm. you know and so our weekends are like sports oriented mm -hmm. like the summers are only time off if mm -hmm. not during basketball baseball you know it's just non-stop year round mm -hmm. so it seems like you know we're becoming more conscious mm -hmm. but i mean it's only certain areas and certain groups obviously but becoming more conscious about how important it is to start at an earlier age to have your to, kids be active and not just to be active but to realize that there's fun ways mm -hmm. to be active yeah. mm -hmm. you know like it doesn't mean you have to go run on the treadmill for 30 45 minutes and mm -hmm. that's the only way you're going to get right. fit there's other ways right. to do it and it just seems like now more so like team sports is like the a way big, a yeah. big thing Mm -hmm. Especially with San Antonio getting all of the like the new teams, like the new Scorpion soccer team mm -hmm. and the new indoor football. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to help. And it, and it also seems like around Olympics time, mm -hmm. like everybody wants to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wants to do gymnastics and swimming now, yeah. you know, because it's on the Olympics. And it's more, you know, like, um, it's more uh, public, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like, oh, you know, like, look what they're doing. I want to do that. You know, a and, lot of people are involved, in it, or it seems like a lot more people are getting involved in team sports and intramural or whatever they, they call it. What are some of the challenges when you think about physical activity and how important it is in this community for people to be physically active? The money, like you said, like even if you play for, like I know the YMCA is a lot of people's cheapest option, mm -hmm. but I've noticed throughout the years like it keeps getting more and more expensive. expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like from when I was little, it was really reasonably priced, but like for my little sister, she wants to do all these different sports, and it's like no, you have to pick one mm -hmm. because it's too expensive. So it's expensive to be involved in some of these uh, organized sports activities yeah. or gym member gym gym members. Memberships especially. Mm -hmm. So cost of getting involved in physical activity programs and things. What are some other challenges? Time. Yeah, oh, like, go ahead. No, I was telling them earlier, I just did this research project where I um, gave everybody a survey to see what their barriers to exercise was. And the number one, two, and three were lack of uh, willpower, uh, time, and energy. You know, <clears throat> especially as you get older, you start feeling it. You know, you have less energy. Mm -hmm. Like, I think about what I could do 10 years ago, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do that even if I tried. There's mm -hmm. no way that I could keep up all of this and still be, like, mm -hmm. okay and be able to go out, you know? Mm -hmm. So now it's like people make all these excuses. It's so much easier to not do it. Then to say, look, I'm gonna make time. I'm gonna, you know, try to get up and use what little energy I have in the morning to do a little bit, you know. And, you know, it's that willpower. It's, it's hard to get going, especially like if you see like your kids sleeping. It's much easier to be like, God, I just want to. I'm just gonna go back to bed in like 20 minutes, you know. So it's like, I think that the most of it is like the time. Time yeah. can be, you know, to really have time to exercise. Or. And the thing about that is that people don't realize, and I think this is what, like, where we can focus too, is like making people realize you don't have to do like 30, 45 minutes or an hour, 30 to an hour of intense workout at a time. You can split it up. 
you know, like if you have during like, your lunch breaks, you know, go walk up and down the stairs at work, or you know, just, just do, crunchy. yeah, just do simple things like that, that it can add up. Mm -hmm. When people think of like, I have to work out, they think I have to make an hour and a half of my entire day just mm -hmm. for that, you know, I'm not going to have the energy to do it, there's just there's no way. Mm -hmm. But if people knew a little bit more that they can do it, like, in spurts, it'd be a little bit more like, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something I can do. It doesn't seem something so out of reach, you know? Mm -hmm. what, what what the rest of you think about in terms of yeah, challenges so like, or like, um, related to physical activity or being physically active? What do you see as some of the challenges? I'm going to get away from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stuff that she's already gone over. Personally, for me, I would say it's time. Time? Um, I take 15 hours as far as school at least per semester. I work at least 35 to 40 hours a week. Wow. I'm in a sorority, so I have a lot of volunteer hours outside of the school and stuff. And it's just time, like black time. Mm -hmm. By the time I, like I leave my apartment at like 6.30, 7 in the morning every mm -hmm. day. By the time I'm home, it's dark. So you're one of those people who when you say, I don't have time, you really mean you exactly. don't have time. So a lot me, of people are like, ah, I just don't <laughs> want to make the time. But, right. Yeah. As far, I mean, as far as that, I've, I mean, I've had friends who are like, hey, that would be, I'm like, where's my planner? Find a, mm -hmm. find a place for me to do it because mm -hmm. I will if you find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for me, it, it since there's lack of time for working out, there's lifestyle choices that I make where as far as no elevators, mm -hmm. no shuttles on campus, Good. things like that. Like small, like you said, small steps that you can take mm -hmm. if you feel like you don't have that hour and a half day to go work out. Which keeps you active, right? At least walking. Yeah. Um, and in Carnet Road, you know, like I park at the very top of the hill. I have to walk up and down to get to class, things like that. What about you guys? What are some of the challenges that you see, or pretty much the same thing? Yeah. I think we all have like a little bit of time at least to work mm -hmm. out. Cause my dad, he works out during uh, commercials. Like mm -hmm. in his bed, he'll just crunch it. <laughs> or uh, he'll just, uh, he actually just brought a dog just so he'll go around. Cause he doesn't like being by himself. Cause he, he's a cancer survivor and he lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. He looks really young cause he's 50 and he lost a lot of weight. And he got really healthy and he, mm -hmm. he made it. That's how he did it. Cause he just wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, so was it? Did he lose a lot of weight because of the cancer? Or did he lose no, a lot of weight like, when he realized he really wanted to? That was a way to. No, I guess because he really wanted to live. He just mm -hmm. didn't want to leave. So after the cancer, he he started gaining a lot of weight, and the doctor told him, "Well, you want to get better, you have to do this," and mm -hmm. he did it. Mm -hmm. So he'll try to do different things, just little small things. Like walking up to stairs at the house and then coming back, stuff like that. So I think we do all have time. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the example you gave. You walk instead of right. you yeah. know drive, or you use the stairs instead of the elevators. And I know during it while you're watching a show, it's like oh, I just did like my weights right. while I was <laughs> watching it though during a commercial. You get your reps in and like that, but somehow. Sometimes too, like even running around my one-year-old, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let's race, you mm -hmm. know, and we're like, let's go back and yeah, forth, and then, you know, like, we're just, we do things, and like, I feel like, man, like afterwards, I'm like, God, I feel like I just got a workout, you know, and it's like, I realize that, you know, just little things like that were like, not, you know, they're not going to substitute a good, solid workout, no. but it's better than Nothing. just sitting there watching him play. It makes a difference. You know? It sort of essentially <clears throat> makes a difference between someone who has an active lifestyle versus a really sedentary lifestyle. Because you're active. You might not be, like you said, going and running for 30 minutes, but you're you're, you're an active sitting. person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And going to my older son's baseball games, running after him is definitely a workout because he's like running everywhere. And I'm like trying to watch and trying to go get him, you know, and it's like, it's keeping me young. <laughs> so what are the resources available to all of you in the neighborhoods? your communities um well i know i was telling them at the other table i've lived like do you know where woodlawn lake is mm -hmm. so in that community like we used to just be able to walk at the like a minute tops because we lived down the street to woodlawn lake and go around the track but if you tried to do it in the if you were a little bit further in and you tried to do it in the neighborhoods you probably wouldn't feel safe and like the neighborhood that i'm at now um is right across the street from utsa um 
and it's I, I've known the community for a long time and it's mostly like older people and stuff so I feel safe even to run at night if I have to uh, or to run early in the morning when it's still dark if I have to mm-hmm. and there's people always in the community so I don't feel like I'm <coughs> ever alone because other people are yeah. always running folks out, mm-hmm. folks out there also so that's for those two communities that I've experienced mm-hmm. what other resources do you guys see out there well, for me, I think we're very lucky, him and I, we, um, well, we go to Tamusa, mm-hmm. and we're at the Brick City Base Campus, mm-hmm. and Tamusa has a contact with the Brick City Gym, mm-hmm. and we have free membership there, we just have to take our, our IDs, so I know, like, I see him at the gym, like, all the time, like, in between classes, or, you know, whatever, because it's just, it's there, mm-hmm. and I've made it to where I'm like, okay, if I have a break, I'm gonna go. Mm-hmm. The bad thing is, like around this time when everything's due, exactly. you know, it's like yeah, yeah. you don't, you know, you don't make the time to go do it because it's like that one time that you used to have. It's like you need to you, study. Yeah, you need to do <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so gyms related right, to yeah, your school. Like we have our gym, so. mm-hmm. Yeah. My, well, see, in, in my neighborhood, like it's, yeah. I can feel like I can go walk out in any at any time, time of the day. Like, it's a huge mm-hmm. difference, don't you think, yeah. when you feel safe mm-hmm. in your neighborhood versus not? Yeah. Like, I'll take the baby, we'll go get um, the mail. You know, even to go get the mail, like it's like I never drive to get it. Like we walk to the mail. But I know it's not like that for everybody. Right. You know? So for you guys, it sounds oh, like I, the resources are pretty effective. Maybe like if more places had open gym nights, mm. like there's YMCA's like all over, but people can't necessarily come in and play basketball because they don't have a membership. Right. So maybe if there was open gym nights like more often, mm-hmm. um, then you know it would encourage people or, maybe to try and get memberships. to try and get memberships or at least to come. Or like a friend of mine made a good comment, like the one in some of the neighborhoods were. There's not a lot of access. The two things that people have access to in those neighborhoods are schools and churches. You know, if you could get something with the school, you know, it's a public thing, yet nobody wants to stay afterwards. I, you know, I get it to like make sure that nobody messes with anything at the school. But if the gym at the school could be open, you know, for basketball, like every night, not have like limitations or, you know, things like that, that way people in the community. I mean, if they, your kids go to school, you're going to be mm-hmm. by school. You know, it's not going to be too much too of a struggle far. to get there. And, you know, even at, like, programs, like, to be implemented, like, at churches, you know, mm-hmm. to where, make them more aware and tell them, hey, you know, we're going to all get together at this school mm-hmm. at this night to do, like, a Zumba class or something like mm-hmm. that, you know? Like, that way they can So they use can existing facilities. facilities. Because they're there, they're right. just closed, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Can you jot that down as an idea? Is that yeah. how you want to word it? Um, Use existing facilities um, for physical activity groups? Mm-hmm. So as you think of... Um, <laughs> what what resources or activities are needed um, in your communities? What's missing? Well, in my community, I don't. I think we only have one YMPA, and it's really small, and it's mostly just for uh, childcare, and that's pretty much it. So you need more places yeah, that you we can do. go and be Yeah, we do. We active. have one like right next to a park, and it has a basketball court, but it's. It's not open all the time. It's mostly closed or it's only during school hours when you're at school and you can go. I'm sure if you had a YMCA that had a pool like this one, like with that slide and things like that, I mean, people would go like mm-hmm. awesome and long. Like in my hometown, like the main thing there, it's Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when I went to the elementary, uh, the bus will pick you up there from the uh, Boys and Girls Club, drop you off there, you would exercise and your parents will pick you up afterward. That's all I did during the... Uh, Elementary, we also had a, a swimming pool in my elementary. We had to learn to swim, and it was actually required. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had stuff like this, and when I moved over here to San Antonio, where I live, we, it's not like that. Like, I don't, need, I don't even think I've ever seen a uh, Boys and Girls Club in my community. Yeah, I know the only Boys and Girls Club that I've ever seen is by UTSA. 
and that's not where most of the San Antonio population lies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would say, um, like, let's see. Okay, or we're just talking physical activity, like, what we need. As far as physical activity, that goes to, I think it also goes back to, like, environment. Because it has to be yeah. the way you're raised. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as me, even though I'm really, really busy, I was raised not taking stairs. Not, I mean, parking far away and not... You were raised, though. Right. Okay. So, so your family it encouraged something that I... Just came up. Right. On my own. Like, my, my mom... You know, does the same thing. We, yeah. when we go to the grocery store, we park far away. There's no reason to waste time driving around right. a spot right, right in front right. of you to walk. Um, Instead of so, driving yeah. for 10 minutes, you can walk for 10. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of just something that, that needs to be installed in you when you're young. Mm -hmm. Send runs everywhere because I tell them we gotta run. Like everywhere we go, we like take quick sprints. Like let's run, let's run. Yeah, and I, I babysat for a while, and I would tell them to take kids. I babysat. Mm -hmm. Let's go for a walk. Let's go to the playground. Let's go to your all. They live in the park. Let's go to your gym and play some kickball. Can you think of any other things that would be nice to have or anything else you want to share related to kind of this whole concept of physical activity? Well, like in some communities, I think that if it was as developed, like as far as like, you know, they had the proper lighting and the proper sidewalks, you know, because people, and even, you know, like the bike lanes, can you, know? can you break that one down to sidewalks, um, bike lighting? Lighting is really important <clears throat> because, like, there's I mean, there's some areas even you know up north, it's not just like one area, but where there isn't enough of that. And if mm -hmm. somebody does want to go out for a bike run, you know, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, I think like, there should be like maybe like security guards on running trails. Have y'all ever been to a running trail that's kind of scary to go to at night? If, if it was lighted or if there was maybe security that was supposed to ride a bike through it. Or the more people that are out there, makes right? It safer. If there was exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that there should be like in different communities there should be suggested uh, trails like not not trails but like Paths. routes so like you know what roads so like if there was like a little board like how they do at the trails they have those little boards that say the different levels and how far but in a neighborhood in a neighborhood it would be just as easy to do that and make sure that you're listing like um, the streets that are the most lit up or um, the different lengths that you could take, like take a right on Green Glen, take a left, and then that's a mile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could even form walk, work, walking groups or exercise groups that way. And people would be like, oh, I'm going to go do that long loop and I'd love it. Just groups, period. Groups is the best way to Look get like, You guys ready? Yep. So one person, I just need to kind of share some thoughts from the group. Okay, in a minute? Mm -hmm. All like right. like to do that from our group. Okay. So shall we start? I mean, we can do it. Can I talk about You ready? Yeah. Who's going? You? Would you just, again, remind people what your name is? Okay, just say it to the group. And then a few observations. Okay, folks, here we go. We're going to start back here. We got a volunteer. So again, if you wouldn't mind sharing your name with the group. Can people hear you? Okay, good. few things we highlighted were um, the stray dogs that apparently are running around the east side, um, the gang activity, um, the, the streets that need to be cleaned up, and a lot of people don't want to go outside to exercise or just leave the house in general to go to the grocery store or walk to work or even drive wherever they need to go so they stay in their house and they live a more sedentary lifestyle lifestyle um 
So we would like to increase the security in our communities by, what does that say? <laughs> oh, creating more gated communities and creating safer park environments. Um, also fixing the streets, especially on the east side. Um, providing family appropriate activity centers and also age appropriate activities. That was a big thing. Um, that are either free or like low cost. Uh, changing fast food to healthier options or healthier restaurants that f that families can sit down and go to and have family bonding time instead of it all being a separate type of thing. Um, a neighborhood watch program possibly being implemented uh, cleaning up the appearance of our neighborhoods with adding some greenery and cleaning up the streets and building of community sites such as libraries which would improve the aesthetics of the community as well as provide more resources and access to resources that are free to the public. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. How about a hand for Avery? Thank you. Another group. You know you're all going, so. Okay. <laughs> all right. Again, your name? Uh, okay. My name's Allie, and I'm a program coordinator with the Health Collaborative. Um, so I want to start off by saying I noticed Avery mentioned the east side, um, but we're in the north side. Uh, one thing I noticed in our discussion is every time we were talking about what we wanted to see, it was for other areas not necessarily the north side. Our conversations kept going what other areas need. So I just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a negative part of self-esteem is uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, like if you think you're fat and you're never going to mount to anything, you know, you're never going to want to better yourself. Um, lack of self-esteem as a barrier to accessing resources. If you don't have a good self-esteem, you know, oh, I'm fat, oh, I'm never going to be able to work out, you're never going to go get a gym membership or buy healthy groceries. Um, a positive part of self-esteem is um, as a role model, you know, if you have good self-esteem and you can be a role model, you know, hey, I lost 300 pounds, you can do it too. You know, acting like a role model. Um, showing your struggle into success, being authentic about it as well is really important. Um, being supportive supportive environments the point I made is you know for instance walking into the Y it's kind of I was kind of intimidating you know seeing everyone pumping the iron so you have to be supportive and have a supportive environment um and then some things that we said is like uh the YMC uh, YMCA has a uh, group involvement um churches there's uh, a lot of churches around in the area the schools a lot of the schools have like you know basketball courts and playgrounds outside that the kids mm -hmm. can access after hours um we want to see encouraging individuals to reach out to their highest potential um other things that we talked about were more uh that we want to see in this area though is uh more open uh, community mm. spaces. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, Parla said the uh, the park. What is it, McAllister Park? There's a park there, but it's always packed. Mm. So maybe more open community spaces. Um, also, one thing we talked about is community swimming pools. Not a lot of the communities in this area have swimming pools, mm -hmm. and even some of the ones that are there, you have to pay for. So that's something that we would like to see. Um, Mobile health clinics, um, you know, owning your health um, and having the resources to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, more accessible daycare centers. And our point with that one is like, you know, say you're a single mom and you know you need to work out or lose weight, but then you have, oh, I have a child. What do I do with my child? I can't go work out. So that, um, and then awareness around resources available throughout San Antonio um, and not stigmatizing choices of those without resources, which means not saying, oh, people on the West Side are fat because they don't go to the doctor or whatever. Okay. You know what I mean? And that was, you want to okay. add anything? Did I hit everything? Good. Okay. All right. Nice work. Thank you. All right. Another group. 
All right. So what we addressed was um, awareness of resources. And what we thought of, she brought up a great idea, was contacting churches. Since majority of the ethnicity here is Hispanic, so high percentage, and most mm -hmm. of them end up going to church on Sundays. Okay. So we thought maybe we could provide screenings there, more events, yep. and maybe develop resource booklets. Because a lot of them are, oh, you can go on the internet, access a public library, not everybody has time for that. But everybody has time for church, especially if you're that family oriented with their mm -hmm. religion. So I believe on Sunday if the churches did hand out those booklets or if we developed booklets that had, you know, all these events, access to medical services or free clinics, free screenings, that'd be great for people to know. And um, I also talked, we also mentioned um, mass transit. Maybe they developed a relationship with the buses. Hmm. Most of the people that go on buses are the poor population. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've seen lots of people there, you know, reading magazines or listening to their iPod or newspaper. Yeah. Um, if we also provided, you know, resources there that can communicate with them, that type of population about weekly events, again, free clinics, contacts maybe that you can call. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can contact Health Collaborative if they wanted to and mm -hmm. find out more information one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Cause nowadays everybody has a cell phone so they can probably do that. And she mentioned a really great idea about community gardens. I never thought of that, which <laughs> sounded awesome to basically maybe have community gardens and if you go you can grow if you have time to grow a whole flower bed why not grow your own vegetables or try mm -hmm. to grow it yourself yeah. especially for the senior community that have lots of time on their hands I mean they can probably grow them for the community and then have days where you can give it out to yeah. you know an event and yet again people will know about the event because we could provide all the resources of yeah. winners for it so um, that's basically all we had and I talked about college too, like awareness in college. Not too many students know how bad food is until they do, until they gain weight, which myself, of my f first semester, I did horrible because I didn't know. And now I'm horrified by our, our food there. It's, we have a cafeteria that doesn't have any type of healthy food. We don't have access to any type of vegetables and we need to be aware about that too, maybe have more clinics there about health awareness. Yeah. We have eye clinics, we have blood pressure clinics, we don't have clinics that talk about healthy food. So even around that area, and our college is in that area too, but also in other areas just everywhere in San yeah. Antonio, not just yeah. this one, because there's also people that don't know that live in yeah. amazing houses and great areas. So that's basically all we addressed here that covered everything. Yeah. Mainly. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. So kind of the low-hanging fruit for these volunteers tonight <laughs> may go back and talk about what kind of food options. There's a school system we work with, Abby and I, in Williamsburg, Virginia, in the elementary schools where they're getting elementary school kids to do tasting menus. And what they're finding is that the kids are invested in the food that is being served to them. There's a greater likelihood they're going to purchase that food. So good for you all. Maybe this will turn into kind of a, kind of a movement. <laughs> you could. I mean, you should be able to relate. The food is horrible. Even I've seen professors, even faculty, they some of them get like the worst food. They don't even care. But I mean. So that's a little bit about awareness of resources and information, right? Yes. For them too. Great. Thank you very much. How about a round of applause? Thanks. Great work. We've got some advocates. All right. One of the other two groups. Who wants to go? Yeah. Great. Tell folks your name again and... Sorry. It's okay. Here, I'll come over here so I can see it. Great. Okay, my name is Zaina. Um, I'm a freshman at Incarnate Word. Um, we talked about physical activity and we, ha we did have a lot of positives that we saw in our community. So we always see like people actually going and it's usually more family oriented. So that's definitely a positive. Um, I was talking about how I noticed this whole 5K fad thing that's going on. So I don't know, you probably see it on Facebook all the time, all these different 5Ks that you can do, the color runs, all that different stuff. But the downside with that is that most of them are costing, you know, anywhere from 15 to $50. Mm, so maybe mm. if we had some more free ones, we were talking about the Ciclovia. So that's a really good resource. But we, we need more of those to get the community, like, 
up and at it. Um, let's see. Oh, we talked about cost of gym memberships and physical activity programs being an issue. So, um, like, you know, little kids love sports. They love to get involved with their friends. But most of the time, they want to play every single sport that they know of. And they, they just can't because it's too expensive for their families. And then that becomes an issue. Um, let's see. We have lack of willpower and time. Mm -hmm. So that we're such a busy society that we might not always be able to find the time to actually work out and get our kids active. Um, so then we would try to brainstorm some ideas on how we could improve mm. the community. And we thought about using existing facilities for free activity groups. So think about all the elementary, middle schools, high schools that we have in our communities. Um, they all have gyms. They have their playgrounds, some of them have tracks, but they're closed most of the time when we could go. So they're open during school hours, but then they close them. So maybe if they were open more, they could have more open gym opportunities and get the community involved. And transportation, it would be a lot easier to get there because you would just go to the elementary school that, that your children go to, that's right down the street from you. Um, we talked a lot about sidewalks and bike lanes and lighting in the communities. So while people are getting out there, they might not have sidewalks and lighting that would make them feel safer. And then we thought of the idea of, you know how when you go to like bike riding trails, they have the boards that say the different routes? Well, they could easily do something like that in neighborhoods where they say, um, if you want to run a mile, you know, you follow this track. If you hmm. two miles, mm -hmm. you can follow these streets. Um, yeah, and it can, yeah, and then they could put like the safer streets. They would be aware of the ones that people feel more comfortable on. So they could easily make tracks like that. Um, they could take the more lighted streets into account. Um, sidewalks, you know, a lot of streets have might have potholes and stuff like that. So they could probably put together some kind of board that informs people th this is the best track to run on in this neighborhood. Great. All right, thank you for those ideas. <laughs> Final group. Great work. Okay, how are you talking to you? Okay, mm. we were focusing on healthy eating and I'm Alyssa from the Health Collaborative. Um, our okay. main focuses were um, the disconnect between the community, the nutrition educations that are available, the education classes, mainly focusing on food safety and food prep. Because if you are new to cooking fish and chicken and better options, then you need to know how to prepare those items safely. And then also moving um, with the education, um, addressing portions for kids and adults, the differences between those. <laughs> And then um, the peer influence plays in on this because they could have a positive influence like, hey, no, let's not go get seconds. Um, let's go walking instead after we eat. Um, and then also it could have the negative aspect um, that encourage the seconds or encourage the um, empty calories in the drinks. And then um, peer influence can steer in either way with uh, the portion controls as well and then the barriers that we addressed are definitely access to healthy foods um, most food deserts that we mentioned um, they do rely on their gas stations to get quick items if they don't mm. have a grocery store close by so they are paying higher prices for those food items and then their options are limited as far as fresh fruits and vegetables um, another barrier that we addressed is that they're assuming that those better, healthier options are out of their budget range when in fact they're, they're already paying higher prices on processed foods and boxed items when they can just readdress their budget and plan out their meals to include those fresh items. Um, also another thing that we did mention in other groups is they're unaware of the resources that are available to them to help them plan those, I those meals. Um, what we decided that we wanted to see program-wise, um, affordability, uh, healthy food options, advocacy to make those uh, items better. I know what we mentioned was McDonald's um, 
automatically salting their burgers. So if we could get a policy that addresses that yeah. to get them to change that simple thing, <laughs> that would help um, those people that are burgers. watching their sodium intake and those that are Changing unaware that policy. McDonald's was even doing that. Um, let's see. We also focused on school lunches, getting all the districts to kind of be on the same game plan. I know Northside or Northeast might be a wealthier school district and they might have access to those salad bars and fruit bars or a school garden and some of the other, like less fortunate districts don't have access to those. So getting the monies to be distributed more evenly so all the kids in San Antonio areas get those same ava available options. And then was there anything else that I needed to? Let's see, um, definitely promote the nutrition classes that are available already and connecting those with the community. Great, all right, well, thank you very much. I don't know if you all realize, but I know this was for a volunteer effort, but you've all become health advocates in your own way. So hopefully there's some opportunities here where there may be some things you might do individually, but also maybe working within the institutions or your own family, there could be potential change. So we really appreciate your uh, level of engagement, your thoughtfulness. We want to record this information. What I'd like to do is turn it over to Steve to kind of do a closing piece and share with you kind of, so what are we going to do with this information? and how you might want to stay involved. <laughs> I think uh, before I say anything, I would let, Steve, come here, please. I think we should, uh, I think we should uh, thank Steve for his- You're welcome. Helping us make the conversations. You made and, it easy. Uh, we have Abby here and Elizabeth and Catherine back there is kind of quiet. And Allison over here. Um, and back there is Jennifer. So I want to thank, uh, want to thank HRIA, Health Resources in Action. So, uh, and, but most importantly, thanking you for coming here and uh, giving your voice. Some very powerful issues were uh, stated and some strategies, uh, talking about barriers and ways to get beyond the barriers, very powerful stuff. And you and I are going to connect on the campus soon and talk about that cafeteria. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I want to thank you for that. We, I was said at the outset how this will evolve. This is not something that will change the world tomorrow, uh, the conversations we have now. But incrementally, we are changing the world. And the, the conversations and the documentation of this it does go into a report, but it's not a shelved report. It becomes part of an action plan incorporated into ways of, it's actually called a community health improvement plan with indicators to see whether we're moving the needle and developing resources to help, uh, perhaps with lighting and overcoming some of the barriers, to see whether we're actually making a change. And like I also said earlier, uh, Steve and I met with uh, the mayor and his staff over the last couple of days and they're very open, very interested, very very listening to the voice and one of those manifestations was that half a billion dollar bond that came out a year or so ago that began the changes in lighting in neighborhoods and improving the parks. So we think, oh, well, half a billion, so probably we need another billion to make <laughs> it work and perhaps that's where we'll all end up doing that. But your voice is a part of that is part of that whole process so I thank you for taking the time and coming here this evening and engaging us and yourselves in the conversation engaging the community the larger community of which we're all a part so yes ma'am I, I want to say something sure <coughs> excuse me if I can I just want to say thank you to the volunteers that came out tonight and like yeah. you said I think it's important to note that tonight you guys came in to earn service hours but we were inviting you guys to be a part of the Plan. And it really, to us, it means a lot that you guys were able to share a lot of your thoughts, a lot of your own personal reflections. We had a lot of people that were here tonight that actually are not of San Antonio. You're actually coming from Houston or from California or from other communities. And the information that you brought today, um, your insight that you brought from other communities and how San Antonio can gain from those experiences is really beneficial for us. Um, what we're going to do for you is send an email to your professors to let them know exactly what you were a part of tonight. And we're also going to provide you guys with a copy of the health assessment report that we did in 2010 and give you an update for the 2013 assessment when it rolls out. 
When you guys see this report and the 2013 assessment and the long-term plan behind it, it'll be something that you're really going to be proud of because today what you did was empower not just yourselves, but you gave voice to a lot of other communities, a lot of students that are in the same situation as you guys are, that are living in the communities that you are living in. And so when you look at this 2013 assessment as it rolls out, and we're going to keep you um, connected with that and keep you aware of that, you'll be able to see the long-term vision. And the part that you guys played today is so, so important. You guys should be very proud of what you did today. And for that, we applaud you. Nice work. Nice work. OK, what's next? We're done. We're done. So um, there is a table full of nutritious sandwiches and carrots and broccoli <laughs> and, um, and some squash that I've been eating and other things. So thank too. you again. Thanks again. So now what school are you all from? You're from Texas and I'm from San Antonio. You too? Oh, you said in Incarnate? I'm Steve. You're all from Incarnate Word? And you're Oh, uh, A&M A &M as well? Okay, great. So now you're getting credit for this. So we'll get a note back to your professor saying great job.